right, good morning. Um, today's actually going to be the last day, um, well, the last chapter of this book. Um, so, and actually today's the uh, October the 1st. It's a Sunday morning here in Southern California. It's currently 6.57 a.m. And um, my wife and I are going to, well, my wife's getting ready for church. She's she's doing her, her Brazilian wax over here, getting her ready to do her face and get ready for church, getting all jazzed up for church. <laughs> and uh, she's right here next to me. And um, so she's going to, she's going to periodically um, chime in and add a comment. Like you can say good morning now. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Um, so this is going to be um, titled the language of love and um so like i said this is the last chapter of our book foundations for christian marriage uh, a handbook for married couples and those preparing for marriage um actually we got to meet uh, a young man by the name of um joshua yesterday i was fishing down at the lake and um he's actually gonna be um getting married to his uh his fiance and um i was able to by the grace of god share this um playlist with him if you're watching this um playlist joshua and um spouse good morning and um just want to just uh hope that this this um chapter blesses you guys as, it, as, it, as much as it does us um, and then those of you who are um, who have been following along with us, uh, I just wanted to say thank you guys for hanging in there on this playlist and um, you know studying to show ourselves approved as husbands and wives and sons and daughters of God. Um, so, without further ado, uh, we're going to go ahead and read and learn how the language of love works. Uh, as a Christian, um, I, I think that the world has a different understanding and concept and opinion in, uh, of what love means and what it is. Um, the more we study and understand God and the Bible, um, our, our understanding and our opinion of love um, it actually changes <laughs> and it, it gets all screwed up and altered because um, our how we've been trained to love people uh, in the world um, you know is it is a false a false love it's um, it's telling people that you love them for what you can get from them and and instead the love language of that we, we're supposed to have, is supposed to be in our actions um, and how our, our how we say we love our spouse and how we love God is by you know well one how you how you um, know that somebody is saved and born again is by the fruit that they walk in the character that they walk in um, on, a, on a daily basis I'm not saying that people don't fall and slip and stumble but um, when you fall and stumble and slip, you're supposed to fall and stump, stumble and slip into the arms of God, um, not backwards. Um, so those of us who have fallen backwards um, through trial and error, which I think could be the majority of us, um, you know, we repent of that right now in Jesus' name, and we ask that God would relent on, um, and uh, we know that He already has relented and He already has. Uh, chosen to um, take all of our sins upon the cross of salvation, and uh, and then he, he looks at he looks at our sins no more. So um, that's the grace and the mercy of God. And the Bible says that um, every day uh, His mercies are new. So we thank you, Heavenly Father, for um, the new mercies that you've bestowed upon us today. That we're able to um, choose uh, whom we will serve, and as for me and my house, 
uh, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and uh, begin this chapter, last chapter of Foundations for Christian Marriage, titled The Language of Love. If we are to have a successful and lasting relationship, we need to understand one another. Again, if we are to have a successful and lasting relationship, we are, we need to understand one another, especially the differences in male and female perceptions. We will consider speaking looks, sorry, we will consider speaking looks, smell, understanding, timing, and atmosphere. First, the voice. Song of Songs, chapter 1, verse 15. Song of Songs, chapter 4, verse 3. Song of Songs, chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. Behold, you are f fair, my love. Behold, you are fair. Your lips are like a strand of scarlet, and your mouth is lovely. You are all fair, my love, and there is no spot in you. Come with me, my spouse. What wife, what wife could resist such an invitation? Behold, you are fair, my love. Behold, you are fair. Your lips are like a strand of scarlet, and your mouth is so lovely. You are all fair, my love, and there is no spot in you. Come with me, my spouse. <laughs> there, that's uh, jo uh, Joshua. You, that's what you can say to your wife right now. You can say, "Behold, you are fair, my love." <laughs> oh man, say that to your wife. Say that to your wife. Uh, if you're sitting there with your wife, tell her. Like, I'm gonna look at my wife right now. I'm gonna say, "Behold." You are fair, my love. Behold, you are fair. Your lips are like a strand of scarlet, and your mouth is lovely. You are all fair, my love, and there is no spot in you. Come with me, my spouse. <laughs> oh, man, you guys would really laugh if you saw my face right now as he's telling me this. <laughs> got green wax on my face, and he's telling me I'm how fair I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's got that green... Bikini wax all over her face when I'm telling her. That's funny. Okay. You are handsome, my beloved. What wife could resist such an invitation? What wife could resist such an invitation? You are handsome, my beloved. Husbands love to be praised. Men are attracted by what they see. Um, they, only have, they only have to see their wives undressing. And they are re they are ready to go. <laughs> oh gosh, um, women are attracted by what they hear. It is not only words of love that they need. Um, so women are attracted by what they hear. It is not only words of love that they need, but the tone of voice and the body language are important. A loving. Gentle, see you tonight, darling. See you tonight, darling. Delivered with a hug will work wonders. She will get the message and she will be ready. Both partners need words of admiration. Appro approbation, approbation and respect. You will do well to cultivate such an attitude and vocabulary. Most of us did not learn it in our parents' home. Learn the language of love. I recommend that you read the Song of Songs together aloud. Conversely, a habit of brisk, brusque. Critical language will drive anyone away. Who wants to make love to a nagging wife or a surely unhelpful husband? I'm gonna actually, uh, to this video, I'm going to share um, the Song of Songs that my wife and I did years ago. We read it together. Like, yeah, it was pretty cool. Anyways, okay, so um, shared covenant love is crucial. Caring, sorry, shared covenant love is crucial. 
curing loneliness. The language of love ends all hostile and divisive communications, for it speaks out of a love shared life and magnifies oneness. Jack Hayford, the Spirit Filled Life Bible. Okay, the next one is looks. We are no longer our own. We owe it to our lover to be attractive. Again, we are no longer our own. We owe it to our lover to be attractive. Um, we looked stunning our wedding day. It took a lot of effort. Let's keep it up. To be over to be overweight and unkept, kept, kept, unkempt mm. is not our portion. Thank God there are plenty of helps available. We have no excuse to be unattractive. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God. If we love our own bodies, we will nourish and cherish them. Smell. Deodorant is a wonderful thing. <laughs> Perfumes and aftershaves abound. Uh, gentlemen, your wife will not appreciate three days growth of beard. Ladies and gentlemen, neither of you will like bad breath. Be romantic and considerate. Prepare for love. Understanding, husbands, <laughs> First Peter, chapter three, verse seven. What is this? I'm hanging off your eyebrow. <laughs> but First Peter, chapter three, verse seven says, "Husbands, likewise, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life. And or sorry, that your prayers be not hindered." There is a well-known joke about lovemaking that says women are like jumbo jets. They need a long runway. Men are, are like helicopters, always ready to take off. It's humorous, but very true. A wife will need much more preparation for play than her husband. But it's play, isn't it? Godly play at that. So relax, learn what pleases and enjoy. Newly married couples need to understand the psychology of the opposite sex. It is something you should not be afraid to read about and discuss. Stick to Christian authors who will teach you in the ways of godliness. Um, recommended reading, The Act of Marriage by Tim LaHaye. Uh, don't be dismayed if reaching a mutual orgasm takes time. Uh, like anything else, practice makes perfect. Husbands, understand and consider your wife's menstrual cycle. Okay, the next one is timing and atmosphere. Love making is simply the apex of married communication. So if there is not much other interaction, love making will suffer. It is a good practice to put a hedge around your love. How do you do this? By taking time out together. Couples, should aim to have at least one romantic interlude each week. A candlelit dinner or a special treat, just for the two of you. Ideally, you should take, say, three breaks away together each week. This is how to nurture love. Long walks, a mutual hobby or playing games, activities, which enable you to relax, talk, and enjoy. When you have children, this will be far from easy, but all things are possible with forethought and planning. It depends on what your priorities are. If you intend to stay, if you intend to stay the course for a happy and romantic marriage, you will find time. Love making should be a celebration. Have a party for two. Put on the music, perfume your bed, enjoy. And that's it. That's the last of the chapter. <laughs> um, and then there's some recommended reading books here. God the Match, God is a Matchmaker by Derek Prince. Marriage Covenant by Derek Prince. I Married You by Walter Trobish. And then Kingdom Marriage by Tony Evans. Um, so, and uh, 
that is it. Do you have anything that you'd like to say? Me? Um, yeah, that you think would be good to throw in in this chapter. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, uh, not really. I I mean, this this book was really good. I think that it um it really helped with a lot of different things and topics and stuff like that. I think, um, I don't know, not really, to be honest with you. I just, I'm not going to try to, I'm not going to try to think of something. Right. Um, but yeah, no, no, not really. But, um, those of you who, um, oh, what you guys see me doing on the screen is, I'm <laughs> sorry. I know it's probably like annoying or whatever, but I'm actually trying to go to the, I was trying to go to the very first. This is a very big book. We did spend a lot of, a lot of hours um, reading it. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to go to the front to show you what the, what the cover looks like. Hold on. Um, so here it is. Okay, that's the that's what the book looks like. Um, for those of you who you want to get the book for yourself or you want to teach the book to others. Um, it's a Foundations for Christian Marriage, a handbook for married couples and those preparing for marriage by Catherine Janadu. You can find that book on um, Amazon, as you can see up here in my, um, up here is uh, in the toolbars. They can find it on Amazon, Kindle. Um, so I purchased it. It's, it's only a few bucks. So, um, what about you, babe? Did, did you want to share anything? Um, so, yeah, if you're watching this and you're not married, you're you're thinking, I don't really need to be doing marriage classes before I get married. Absolutely. Two things I recommend before you get married that I don't think was covered. That wasn't covered in this book. Number one, huh. get deliverance. Go get deliverance. Go get inner healing. Um, because you don't want to bring your trauma, drama into the Past marriage. relationships. Past relationships. I think we did speak about this, but she uh -huh. didn't say it in this book, but I'm going to say it. Uh -huh. You owe it to yourself and to your future spouse, or even to your spouse now, uh -huh. to go get healed. Go, go, go. Go and handle those things before God in prayer and fasting, so that the, your marriage will improve. Because a lot of the a lot of the things we drag into marriage are our childhood, our childhood uh, experiences, and and it really can hurt the marriage. So if you haven't gotten healing for some certain things, please do it immediately. Mm -hmm. Stop avoiding taking care of those things because it it really hurts marriages yeah that's true and if you need and if you need a uh, deliverance and inner healing please contact us at california deliverance center at gmail.com and set up an appointment and we also have a website called california deliverance center so yeah, set it up as soon as possible, or you can contact us at please disciple me at gmail dot com, whichever one you can remember, and and take care of that right away. Your marriage needs to be mentored too. You you need we need I think more than anything the body of Christ needs uh, mentorship in marriages. Yeah, that's true. There's um, it's really important to get plugged into some sort of a marriage ministry. Mm -hmm. Um. I, most churches have them, so I'm trying to think. Most churches have marriage ministries, or you can go on Google and uh, put marriage ministry, and then uh, click type in marriage ministry, and then whatever city that you're in or town, um, and then it'll it'll show you. And it doesn't have to be a church that you go to. It could be because mm -hmm. a lot of times, like our our church doesn't have a marriage ministry, so. Um, but we, my wife go, my wife and I go to a marriage ministry once a week. We go and, uh, we go to the marriage ministry just for accountability for our, 
our own marriage and we take time out for our marriage. You know, that's really important to do too. Like I said, it's it's important to get spent time with your with your spouse, but at the same time, it's it's also important to be um, around other people that are married um, and that are working on their marriage mm-hmm. marriages as well, because you'll learn little tidbits from them, like learn learn things and pick up things um, from them. Right? It's, it's uh, really good to do so. Anyways, if um, I think that's about it. That's about it, I guess. I gotta get ready for church uh, again. Um, pick up this book if you like. Please let us know in the comments um, if you have any questions or uh, anything that you want to say in a comment. Let us know. Um, I think that's about it. I think I said that already like five times. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching, and if you didn't watch the other videos, please do, because they're very, very informative. Yeah. All right. Take care. Have a good day. Bye.